Welcome back to this guy's garage. Today we're going to tell you the difference between a dual action sander, a random orbital sander, and a random orbital sander with an inter interference pad. It all has to do with finish. And all this is coming up. sander the reason I am NOT a fan of the DA sander is because it has a large oscill oscillation the dual action sander what makes it dual action is you can lock it in place and you can use it as a grinder as opposed to using it just as a sander alone it has large oscillations which are good for doing body work it has a nine millimeter oval swing but for a finishing sander, it's it's not great. So you have your DA, and it's going to leave a scratch mark like this. You have your, your random orbital, which will leave tighter scratch marks. And then you have your random orbital with your interference pad, which... It's more like this, which will give you a much smoother finish. I'm a fan of the random orbital sander, and you can see here, it spins free, but it oscillates. Three to five millimeter, depending on the, the type you have. This one, it takes a PSA pad, which means it takes the sticky sandpaper. Sticky sandpaper is pretty good because it's pretty reasonable, but you can only use it once or twice you ain't gonna get a third use out of it never lays down the same and when you're at working at one area I generally want to stay in that area and stay there until I'm finished so I will work my way up between 40 80 180 220 320 and the other limitation of the PSA pad is it's hard to find anything finer than 400 grit sandpaper for it I was gonna buy a sanding pad for this and the sanding pad to switch this over to a hook and loop setup was about 40 bucks and I was able to buy a sander for 50 bucks so let me show you what I'm talking about so I bought this for 50 bucks it came with the hook and loop sandpaper already attached to it it's a five millimeter osculation the great thing about the hook and loops setup is on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. You never have to throw the paper away until you're ready to throw it away. I picked both these up off of Amazon. I'll leave links in the description below. You can apply an interference pad, which is great for doing finish work. Now the interference pad is thick, but it'll take some of that side-to-side -side osculation out of it. You can see it rocking back and forth there. And if you did need to do any color correction or paint correction, you need one of these pads, and I'll be doing a demonstration on that coming up. The other reason you want to gear up for the hook and loop system is your your sandpaper availability now goes up to five to seven thousand thousand grits per square inch, which is sandpaper you use when you're looking for a perfect paint job so right now I'm gonna put some 800 grit sandpaper on on my sander and we'll give it a try You see here how small the swirls are? 
this paper. I love it. You can see here, 800, this is what I sanded this with, and it's right down to the bottom of the orange peel, there, so this is a completely smooth surface. I'm thoroughly impressed with this sun gold sandpaper, really impressed with the interference pad, and you could spend more, you could spend more money on a sander for than 40, 50 bucks, but you really don't need to. So thanks again for stopping by this guy's garage. If this information helped you out some, you can help us right back. You can hit that subscribe button. It'll be right there. Leave us a thumbs up. That's the next best way you can help us out. Ask your questions. Leave your comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts on them. And until the next time, folks.